In this next part, we'll be talking about R scripts and R markdown files. In the lab, we are mainly using R markdown files. You may have accidentally been using an R script. We're going to talk about the differences between these two things. First of all, let's make a new R markdown file. To do that, you go to the top left hand corner, click the green plus sign, find the R markdown option. Uh, we can name this, but for now let's just leave it as untitled, press OK, and we've made a new R markdown file. This is a template file. It's got some stuff in it, basically showing you a little bit about how this kind of file works. For now, uh, the first thing we'll have you do is click the knit button. It's going to ask to uh, save the file. So click save. And we've now uh, compiled this document into this one over here, which looks much nicer. Now, if you press knit, you might not see this document over here in the viewer pane. It might pop up as a new window. If you want to change this behavior, you can go to the tools menu and find global options. Then go down to R markdown settings and look for Show Output Preview. So if we click Show in Window, press OK, then it will show the output in a new window. For example, this may have been what happened to you when you press the Knit button. It opens up a new window. I like to see the output in the Viewer pane, which is it's basically a little web browser for you. So I'm going to set the global options to show the output preview in the viewer pane. Press OK. Now when I knit this document, we see the results in the viewer pane. Now if you want to see these results in your web browser, press this little button right here. And you'll see it in a web browser. Okay. So that's the first part, making a new R markdown file. Let's look at some of the remaining problems here. We want to delete the template to start fresh, saving your R markdown file, add some notes and codes to the file, know how to make an R code block, knit the file, and a few other things. Let's do all of these things, uh, and we'll, we'll make another file just for fun. First of all, let's look at our Files tab to see what we have here already. We've created a new untitled R Markdown file. If we click this, we're going to see it in the editor pane. When we press knit, that created a new file called untitled.html. If you click this, you can ask to view it in your web browser, or when you knit it, it will show in a pop-up window or in the viewer like we've set it uh, just a little bit ago. Let's start fresh. I'm going to take both of these files and delete them. So I've clicked them, I'm pressing delete. Yes, I want to delete these files. Uh, it's asking me if I want to move this file from the editor because it no longer exists. Yes, so I'm closing the file. Let's make a new R markdown file. This time I'm going to give it a name, new R markdown, press OK. And it, this is going to be the title of the file. This is going to be the first words we see when we knit it. And notice it still doesn't have a file name. It's called untitled1. So let's press knit and give it a new name. I, I'll call it mat1. Press save. And here it is. 
This is the output. This is the HTML file. So there's mat1.rmd up here and the output, the HTML file. Now, first thing I want to show you is if we, what happens when we click this X button. This is not going to delete the file. It's going to remove it from the editor window. So now it's removed. It's not there anymore. If we want to edit this file, we can click on it in the file tab and now it comes back in the editor window. All right. The next thing we're going to do is delete. So I'm going to start on line 11 here, go to the very bottom of the file, select everything, press delete. Now we have an empty file. Notice uh, the name of the file in the editor has turned red. This means there are unsaved changes to the file. Whenever you knit the file, it will automatically save the changes and this will turn to black. Let's do that. Now we have a blank document. There's nothing in the document, so we see just the title, which is what you can change here. It's printing the author name right here, and it's printing the date. Okay, and it's printing them as an HTML. For your purposes in the lab, you will leave this part the same. You will also leave this first part the same. So let's add some stuff. Here we've added a header. What do you think is going to happen if I press? Oh, notice I've added some things and it's turned red again. Um, if we want to save the file, we could go File, Save. And RStudio will also tell you the hotkey for doing this. On a Mac, it's Command S. So if we added some more things, then I pressed Command S, this turns from red to black and it's saved. When I save the RMD file, I'm just saving whatever text I'm adding to the file. I'm not creating a new HTML document. If I want to create a new document or recompile this, I press the knit button. And we will see that I've added a header and I've added some text. I'm just going to delete this text and some text. Usually uh, this text is notes to yourself about what you're doing. So if we re-knit this, we're going to see we've changed that text. Now what else can we do? If we have two hashtags, we make a second level header. Let's see what that does when we knit it. You can sort of see that this header is a little bit smaller than this one. It's a subheader. We could add even smaller subheaders using three hashtags and have more notes. And if we knit this, we can see a smaller subheader right here. Let's go back to some of the questions we're trying to answer here. And what, what have we done so far? Uh, where are we? Okay, we've deleted the template. We've saved our file. And we've added some notes, but we haven't added any code, any R code. And to do that, we're going to have to make an R code block. So let's go over to our file and um, make a new header, add some code. Here's how to add some R code. We need to write a code block. It's three back ticks, a left curly brace. Um, I just pressed shift curly brace and it automatically made a left one and a right one for me. We need to put an R inside of this. 
and we need to close it uh, with three more curly or three more back ticks. This is an R code block. If we put R code inside of it, for example, one plus one, we can run the code. We can run the code by pressing play. It will put the output in the editor window. Whenever we do this, it's also running the code in the console. So if we looked at the console, we'll see that the code has been put into the console and the output has been put into the console. I'm going to make a couple lines of code really quick. So these three lines will create three variables and they will put the numbers one into A, two into B, and three into C. Um, I'm going to save this file. Note by saving it, I haven't done anything in terms of running the code. So if we were to look at the environment, we could see it's empty. These variables are not in the environment. If I run this code, it will place, it, it will do each line, and now we can see each variable is in the environment. Just for fun, I'm going to clear the environment and I want to show you that you can run one line of code if you want. Uh, for example, you could highlight it, copy it, put it into the console, press enter. Now we've run the first line. From before we know how to remove something, so I'm removing this thing just for the time being. If you are on a line of code, you can run that single line on a Mac by pressing command return or command enter. That will run the one line of code. If you're on a PC, that's control return or control enter. Let's remove this. If you want to run two lines of code or any number of selected lines, you can highlight these lines and also press command return. So now we've run these two lines of code there in the variables a and b are in the environment now. Let's remove both of those. And uh, of course, if you press the play button, as we've done already, you run all three lines of code. Great. So that is adding some R code. Let's see what happens when we knit this document. We can see the notes and headers we've added. When it gets down to the code block, R will print the code inside of the code block. So it's printing these three lines. And this can be useful for seeing what code was run. In the HTML document, it does not print the R code block stuff with the back ticks, etc. Let's add a little bit of code and ask R to print the variable A and to print the variable C. And we can do this in short form just by writing the name of the variable and save knit. Scroll down, let's see what that looks like. Showing us the first three lines and then a uh, space and then the the, I guess the fifth line, which is the command A, or the variable name A, and that results in an output. So we're seeing here the output is the number one. A contains the number one. And then we're seeing the uh, command, or the name of the variable C and its output printed in the document. If we want to use the command print, we could do that too. So now there will be uh, three things. Oh, sorry, I needed to knit that. If we scroll down, we should see uh, the line print B, and that results in showing us what's in the B variable. Okay. 
The next thing I want to show you is how to stop R from running the commands. Sometimes you'll have a code block that's not working. You, or you might want to otherwise prevent R from running the operations in the code. In order to do that, go inside the curly bracket, press comma, and we're going to type eval equals, and notice as we're writing it's giving us some options, so we can select false. Now, let's see what happens when we knit this. R is showing us the code, but it's not evaluating it. So for example, we don't see printouts for A, C, or B, because R is not evaluating this code. Let me show you one more option. Sometimes you want to hide this gray part with the code. If you want to do that, use the echo command. Set that to false. This means uh, don't echo the code block. So if we knit this, the code block will disappear in the HTML document. Where are we in our, our markdown questions? We've seen how to make an R code block. We've knit the file. We've talked about setting eval to false, echo to false. Oh, let's talk about adding comments to a code block. I'm going to delete first these things. Well, actually, let's, um, yeah, let's delete these. Now, if we delete these and re-knit it, everything should run properly. And there we see our output. Whenever we're inside a code block, we can use a hashtag to write comments. This is helpful for us to say some notes about what's going on. So for example, if I put a comment here, put a one into the variable a, I can write in plain language what it is that the line of code is doing. So if I press knit, uh, what we will see is we will be able to see our comments to ourselves, and if if the comment is preceded by a hashtag, R will not attempt to run this stuff as code. What happens if I don't use a hashtag? Make a comment, for example. Or how about the comment was put a2 into the variable b. First of all, an x pops up. And this, this means that R doesn't know how to interpret this line. We can see that it won't work if we press the play button. There's an unexpected symbol error. It won't work if we press the knit button. It will fail and give us an error saying there's an error on line 21. Unexpected symbol. You could sort of see that something's going on here. This is an example where your code just doesn't work. Um, if you want to temporarily knit your document, even though this code block isn't working, remember what we just talked about. You can set eval to false. Now when we knit the document, it will show everything, but it won't run any of this code because we've set eval to false. If we want to turn this line into a comment, we just put a hashtag in front of it and now everything should work properly. So comments can be very useful for describing right in the code exactly what the code is doing. All right. 
So that's some basic R Markdown stuff. The next part is to talk about R scripts. So let's make an R script and talk about how it's different from an RMD file. To make an R script, go over here to the plus sign, click plus. The first thing, it's your first option, R script. And what do we see here is a completely blank document. It's called Untitled 1. Let's save it. So I did Command S on a Windows would be Control S. Uh, sample R script, save, and it saved it with a .r type of file. That should show up here, sample R script .r. Now there's nothing in it, I just took it out of the editor window. If I wanted to load it back up, I could click this file and it would load back up. This file wants only R code. So for example, if I started writing notes to myself, like we can in a RMD file, we're going to get an error right away. Okay, because R thinks that this is our code. If you want to write notes to yourself in an R script, you always have to put a hashtag in front of it to make it a comment. We can write our code, put a, put a one into a, put a three into b. Now what happens if we save this? All we've done, we've, we've saved this text file. We haven't actually, um, well, let's take a look at the environment. We haven't run this code yet. The stuff that's in the environment is from the operations we were doing with the RMD file. Let's clear the environment and uh, talk about using this R script. One thing we can do is run all of the lines of code using the run command. And it's going to run the current line or selection. Oop, I guess I was wrong about that. Uh, what does this one do? Okay, run the current line or selection. So if you were on this line, you could run it, and it would run that line. Now it's on the second line, you could run it, and it's basically the same as copying and pasting each line into the console. Let's clear the workspace. Same thing, if you highlighted these things and pressed Command-Enter, you could run everything, or that would be Control-Enter on a PC. Notice we do not need this R code block stuff in an R script. In fact, when we make the code block, it's missing something, isn't it? It doesn't turn gray. It doesn't give us a play button. In order to get that to work, you need to be inside an R markdown document with an RMD. All the RMD stuff won't work in a R script. So if you're wondering where is the knit button, there isn't one because R scripts can't be knitted. You will only see the knit button if you are working in an RMD file. Is there anything else we wanted to say? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so that's the end of the R scripts and R markdown files screencast.